Hi there! In this video I'm going to show you how to make an alternative Yorkshire button, so a slightly different design um, than the standard. And I'm also going to show you how to make a bookmark um, using a button. So I'm going to be using the Yorkshire button, but of course you can use anything that you want. So let's get started. For this project, I'm going to use our Yorkshire button template. I'm also going to use a flat button mold. And just as a sort of guide, try to make sure that you've got some excess around the Yorkshire button that you're going to make compared to the flat button mold so that it can go around the mold a little bit nicely. I'm also going to be using um, some foam, uh, the same sort of foam that you use for um, handbags and so on. I'll pop the name of it down in the description below in a link. Embroidery floss, standard um, six-stranded cotton. I'm going to be using an elastic. So this is a pretty elastic, um, a little bit sparkly and a nice color. And because I'm using elastic, I'm also going to be using a piece of cord. This is um, satin cord or rat tail. If you would like, you can, instead of using the wide elastic, you can use ribbon or fabric. And if you do that, instead of using a standard cord, go ahead and get yourself um, some elastic cord. So, so long as one or the other of the two elements are elasticated, you'll be fine. So the first thing that we're going to do is make our Yorkshire button. I'm going to take the end of the thread and I'm going to put it through the central hole of the template and I'm just going to tape it down. Now the reason that I like to tape it is actually because it helps with um, your tensioning in actual fact because when you pull on that obviously you've got some tension there. So I'm going to put my hand behind so that you can hopefully see the template a little bit better and what I'm doing. I'm not making the um, ordinary Yorkshire button I'm doing a different pattern on this. It is a pattern that's in the kit. Um, it's the pattern that on the example uses the variegated thread. So I'm going to wrap just as the same as with a normal Yorkshire button. So that is coming up and around a spoke. You'll come down and basically that's not the spoke we want to wrap. We then want to go slightly to the left and wrap the next spoke, okay? That brings us up to turn around. We're gonna skip this one and wrap around this one. And then I tend to turn the um, template. Come around, skip that spoke, wrap that one. Remember to keep your tension even but not too tight because if it's too tight you won't get your button off of the um, template and now I'm going to go around the one that was um, skipped and we're going to work in the opposite direction and now you can see Every single one of those teeth on the template has been wrapped, okay? And I'm going to cut a length from the spool, which has just dropped on the floor, because you can guarantee that it will. And I'm going to thread a tapestry needle. And you can see I'm coming 
across and I'm going to work first over here. I'm going to zoom in a bit so that you can see what I'm doing with these stitches now. So the instructions say to work reverse back stitch over um, for two rows. Okay, so the reverse back stitch goes under one of those two groups of threads that make up a spoke. And then we're going to come back, go around the next ones. And now around the next. And continue. So I'm going to carry on around and around and to work two rows. There we have two rows. So now I'm going to work ordinary rounding back stitch instead, as opposed to the reverse rounding back stitch. Ordinary rounding back stitch is basically going, you're coming up between the two spokes, you're coming back around one, then going under two. And then we repeat back around one, and forward under two. This is basically the same stitch as um, the standard stitch that you would use on a dorset button. So again, I'm going to carry on doing that.
there's two rows now of the rounding back stitch. So I'm going to do another row of reverse back stitch. And before I finish this row off, I just want to show you a little trick which helps you to make a nice even line. And that is, if I were to put the stitch here, it would be sitting on top, whereas all of the others, that end of the stitch goes below the stitch above, uh, the next stitch along, rather. So what you need to do here in order to give it a nice clean finish, which obviously it's completely optional, you don't have to do this, and in some designs it's better to not do it, but if you just take your needle under your first stitch, you can find that what you do is you lock that into place and it all flows around in a nice circle, okay? So now the rest of the instructions are basically to work a rounding back stitch around and around to the edge. So to save you having to watch it and to save me being at a funny angle underneath the camera, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of stitches, then I'll pop this on pause and complete it. One completed template covered as close to the edge as I possibly can comfortably at the moment. Okay, so that's the first step. I'm going to leave that on the um, mold for the time being, so I'll just set that aside. Next thing to do, just to draw around the button mold that we're going to be using onto the foam. I like to do this with um, some fabric covered buttons when it's on a flat mold. Um, just adds a little bit of um, depth and interest. It just makes it look a little bit more professional for a lot of the um, buttons and of course a little bit of this foam goes a very long way when it comes to button making. Just make sure I'm happy with that. Take a little bit more off the edge. It's nice if you can get it is sort of even with the uh, button mold as possible, but it's not you know, it's not something crucial. That's that. The next thing that we're going to do then is to cover the button mold. So let me get my needle back onto my um, Yorkshire and just remove that tape from the back and I'm going to just flip off the thread from the template. Gets easier as you go around because obviously the whole thing loosens up. 
but you can see that this is why you don't want these to be too tight because if they're too tight you won't be able to get them off at all and there we have our basic shape for our button mold. Now, obviously, if you were making an ordinary uh, Yorkshire button, you would stuff that to be quite circular. What I'm going to do is first, I'm going to work over and under into these loops, just the same as I would with um, a ball Yorkshire button. So that gives us a little pouch. Now I'm going to place that foam inside of there and then the button mold. So that adds a lot of bulk, but as you draw up that thread and pull it around, you'll see that what that does is it gives a nice rounding to the flat shape. Um, uh, that's what I really like about using that uh, foam. I'm going to go around a second time, pulling as I go, and this will help to pull in this covering nice and tight. I went all silent there, didn't I? Concentration. And then I'm going to work a nice knot at the back. Make sure that holds in and trim that off. And there we have our sort of an urchin, a flat urchin Yorkshire button. Okay, and as you can see you've got a nice shape and you've still got that tactile feel of um, the Yorkshire button. So the next thing we need to do is actually work on the um, bookmark itself. So I would advise that if you've got a sort of standard size book, measure it up on that. If you're going to be using a journal or something that is um, a little non-standard, then measure up against that. And what you need to do, you need to decide, well, where is this going? Okay. You want it to have a space. So this will do just fine because I'm going to be able to stretch it to close it. Okay. So I've just made sure that that is fine, but sometimes you can do them a little bit too long and then it all goes wrong. And what you want to do is on one end, you want to secure it right around. Okay. I'm just going to get a pin. So I've, I've folded that over double. So this would be the same if you're using fabric because you don't want a raw edge on this side. And on this side, we're going to add the button. Okay. So you can either do some stitching here at this point. Um, some decorative stitching if you want or so with a sewing machine um, if you want to you know that that's entirely up to you I'm going to use two strands of embroidery um, cotton the same that we have just used to work the Yorkshire button I'm going to do a few stitches to hold in place and I'm going to try to make them quite neat um, even though I know that they're not going to show with when this is actually because the button's big enough to cover the stitches. I'm also going to use the uh, so 
sorry, I'm just looking for a needle. <laughs> I'm also going to use the embroidery thread to sew the button in place. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that um, it matches. I'm going to do a sew through. So I've knotted the end of my embroidery thread. Not well enough. There you go. I'm just passing it through from the back. And then I'm going to work from the front because that will be neater. And I'm just going to work a few stitches through all of the layers. And try not to have any kinks. I'm going to do a double running stitch here, which is basically up in one direction and back down in the opposite to fill the spaces. Which of course makes it look a little bit more like a machine. Has been at it anyway. I've worked my decorative stitching and I've come up. I lost my needle, so I had to start over again. I come through the button. Make sure that's on the right side of my shiny elastic. And then I'm going to go back down through the same hole. I'm going to do this a couple of times, up and down through the same hole and that's why using the same color thread is really helpful. Now you can, if you wish, create a little shank on your um, button first and you can also create a shank when you're sewing it into place, but you don't really need one for this, but I will just show you a easy way. So I've just come through only partially, and then I'm going to wrap the thread around those few stitches that I've done already. And you see that gives just a little bit more depth probably quite hard for you to see actually let's see if I can focus that for you there you go and then back through the elastic but as I say you don't really have to do this I mean you know this is a bookmark it's not a garment that's going to be you need to make sure that everything lies bang on right Back down one more time. It caught through the shank and with the needle. The needle is thicker than that. It doesn't want to go through. Don't you love it when that happens? There we go. I'm just going to do a little knot here as well so that that holds in place and then take my thread through underneath so I can come up off to the side and not have an end of thread hanging so I'll pull up a bit and snip so there's the button side of our bookmark, journal closure, whatever that you want to call it. Okay, so the next thing to do is the other side. And the other side is really easy as well. You're going to fold over just as before. We're going to double fold. 
just to make sure we don't have a raw edge here. And then for this one, I'm going to do a bit of a decorative stitch. I'm going to work a small chain stitch to hold. And I want that obviously to show up at the front. So bring my needle up. Now I can move that pin out of the way. And I'm going to work a chain stitch. I'm going to make sure I go through all of those layers working the chain stitch. So and you do have to fight a bit when you're going through that many layers. Especially if you have a loop like mine that did not want to go around. In fact, for the next one I'm going to do in two stages. I think it's going to be a bit easier for me. And my needles come unthreaded again. Just a moment. These things are sent to try us. I like chain stitch. It's one of my favorite stitches. So it's just a little bit of an accent there. Absolutely. You know, you can do whatever you want. You can just make this blend in if you want to. I'm going to go work some back stitches on the back, not through all of the layers this time, just through the back layers. Give it a little bit of extra strength. Work a little knot. And then again, take the thread through so that I can snip it off and hide the tail. Now for the last job, thread the cord in through that loop that you've done. So you have to make sure that you did leave enough for cord that you're going to use. I'm going to tie this into a loop. Um, the biggest thing is, is to make sure that your loop will accommodate your button. You don't want anything too small, so just do a little double check. You can tie it into um, just a regular overhand knot if you like, but you might find it lies a little flatter and neater if you tie it into sort of squarish knots. I know that's not a proper square knot, so I can never remember the over and under part without looking it up, even though I've been tying them since I was a child. But what I am going to do, I'm going to take some thread I want to make sure that this holds and rat tail is notoriously slippy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch through and I mean you could just stitch this together and have something nice and flat that way but a knot's easiest for most people than to have to worry. You're not going to see any of this which is why I'm not taking a great deal of care, but I am stitching through the pieces of the knot. Just to give it a little bit of extra strength. Tie that off. 
snip that, snip the tails, snip the tail on that thread as well. And then bring that around so that, that fits inside of that loop. Now you can, if you really want to, you could also do a little securing stitch at the back of that to hold that in place. In fact, I think I'm going to do that just to keep everything looking really neat and tidy. Of course, again, this is entirely up to you. You don't need to do this. Pretty happy with the placement of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work this. I've gone through the center bit there. And I'm just going to work a couple of stitches through, but not to the front. So again, this won't be seen, but it is tacking the cord into place in this loop. Little knot. Take it through again, pull up and snip. Okay, so that should hold that in place there. And then you'll be able to mark your place in your book or um, close up your journal by stretching the loop up and around the button. And I'll hold it like that so that you can see the principle. Thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a project, two for one today. Do please click subscribe and like. And if you hit the bell icon and ask to be notified when we upload a new video, that'd be really great as well. Thanks very much. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.